Hello, I'm Sam van Meijs from Geeks Life Luxembourg. I'm uh, here with Patrick Fehmer uh, from uh, Open Data. Yeah, datapublic.lu. What is uh, datapublic.lu? Datapublic.lu is a platform that allows anyone really to share data in an open format and with an open license. And really, the aim of the platform is to allow better data sharing and to publish data sets um, primarily from the public sector. Uh, in an open format and in, with an open license so that anyone can reuse that data. So, which kind of data do you share? Well, we've been going for a year now. We launched the portal last year, the first edition of the Hackathon. And um, when we launched the portal, we had uh, data sets uh, concerning mobility. So we, had, uh, the, we were very fortunate to have the, all the transport data from Verkehrsverbund, which is the local transport authority here. Uh, published, which means um, all the bus schedules and train schedules, as well as real-time information about bus delays and when different buses arrive at different stops. So that was one of the main, um, more most inter interesting data sets we had at the start. Uh, we also have then l lots of geo data um, from the geoportal.lu, which is the geo portal of Luxembourg uh, State. So um, aerial imagery, we have um, uh, map data about roads and houses and all different features. And uh, we, uh, since last year, we've been really working to increase the, the, um, the depth and width of, of data that we have. So we have now, just last week, we uploaded 128 new data sets about statistical information from Statex, so the official statistical agency of Luxembourg. So we're slowly growing. So we started with less than 100 data sets last year. Now we're up to 400 data sets already this year from very different actors. We, as I said, from mobility over to statistical information covering a wide range of, of topics. Uh, we have um, data about ag agriculture and, and geodata as well. And we hope to really increase that and um, this, plat this platform to have as many open data sets as possible on the platform. So everything is open uh, use it. That means I can go there and use anything I find there. The principle is this: you can go on the open data platform. You can search for data sets using keywords or any search term, like just like you do in Google. Mm -hmm. It will give you a list of results of data sets that match your query. You can click on a data set, and it will give you some explanations about what the data set contains, what it, what its meaning is, who who uploaded the data set, and you can download the data. So okay. in a, in a in an open format, preferably. So that can be anything from an Excel file um, uh, over to uh, just text data. So that you can really, the, 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 the goal is not uh, for data providers to upload PDF reports. Because that's one of the problems we've had uh, um, in developing this data set. Lots of administrations that we approach to open data, uh, data too. They said, oh yeah, we have PDFs with annual reports where we have uh, spreadsheets in the PDFs. Problem is, a PDF is really hard to get information out again in, in a machine readable format to be able to reuse it and to process it and analyze it and to change the data. So what we're really trying to push is to have the data in an open format that's machine readable. What this means is oh, most times it's, it's text data. So um, an Excel, uh, Excel um, file is already better because you can actually get the data out. And it's in a structured format. But Excel is still a closed format in the sense that it's, it's a commercial format by a commercial company. Mm -hmm. So what we try and push is that uh, data providers publish their data in uh, CSV, so comma separate values which is kind of the most open format that any machine, any, any operating system, any software can really read. And then of course there's the other aspect which is uh, we have increasingly more real-time data. So for example the bus delays which show you when which bus arrives with which delay. That's real-time data that changes on, on a minute basis or even like every 10 seconds there's, there's, those data get, get updated. There it's not really practical to have downloads of spreadsheets but what you do is you have an API, an application programming interface that you can ask give me the bus delays for this specific bus stop and it will give you back an answer in a machine readable format. So for example for the bus data we have that. So we have an API that anyone can use that's openly licensed that you can any software can talk to and get in the information back in real time. So um, you are here with the uh, Hackathon. Yes. Um, what can you uh, tell us about Hackathon and how you came the, um, the cooperation with that together? Yeah. 
Okay, so the hackathon, the game of code hackathon, is a spon is an event that uh, we, Luxembourg State and Digital Luxembourg, which uh, sponsors, as a way really to um, push people and developers here in Luxembourg to take a look at the open data portal, make use of the open data, to try and come up with new and creative ways to reuse the open data that we've put on the portal. So last year, we had our first hackathon here at the Giza Connection. We had about 120 people uh, participating in that. And they had a subject because we just opened the portal and uh, we had the transport data, which was really interesting data. We had the subject of transport. So the teams were working on finding new ways to reuse that information about the open, uh, open, uh, open transport data uh, to come up with new interesting applications. And since the success of last year, with really interesting um, projects that came out of it, now we wanted to widen the scope a bit, and so we chose the topic of quality of life, which is a bit wider. Many people think of very different things when they think of quality of life. And we hope that the, the, the teams here will be able to find subjects in quality of life that they can focus on and develop new apps that we use, the open data we have, to come up with innovative, appli innovative application and analysis or new services that, that help people in Luxembourg to, to improve or help with the quality of life. So the goal for this challenge is uh, this year quality of life? Yeah, which can mean very different things. It can mean looking at the air quality. So uh, as we saw this morning, we now have real-time data on the air quality across different parts of Luxembourg and Lux Luxembourg City as well as the whole, the whole of the country. So if you go out in the morning, do you want to have a notification on your mobile phone if the air quality is bad? Can that improve the quality of life if you can then make a better choice about if you want to cycle or, um, or walk or take the bus? Uh, another thing is transport, obviously, the same as last year, still an interesting, very interesting subject and a big problem here in Luxembourg, transport, how you can improve people's transport choices and maybe help them make better decisions about not always using a car. Or even housing, we have lots of data now on uh, housing, so statistical data about housing prices, housing availability and so on. Can we help people um, improve their quality of life or by finding better housing or making better choices about housing? Um, for the people uh, that joined the hackathon this year, what are the points that you set up uh, to them to win if they were go going to the first places? Well, it's very straightforward. We have cash prizes. So the first team, um, the, win the winners, first place get 5,000 euros, then second place get 3,000 euros, third place get 2,000 euros, and then we have a special prize also for uh, younger teams with uh, younger uh, people, so um, teenagers that participate, so we give them a separate prize as well to encourage their participation. Okay. Is the, if people uh, join uh, the hackathon and they're doing a great application, yes. uh, is there uh, a chance for them to get a job? Um, I don't, I'm not sure, there's other companies sponsoring the event here that are probably looking for new employees like SAP and, um, and Oracle. Um, so they might come with that agenda here to sponsor the event to find good developers, that's true. What we as Digital Luxembourg want out of this event is twofold. First, we want um, new reuses, new creative ways to reuse the data that we've opened up and have them published in the portal. So at, on the portal you can not only publish data sets, but you, anyone really, you don't have to be a public administration, anyone can create an account and for example upload what you call a reuse, where you used one or several open data sets and created a new app or a new service out of that. And you can put that on the portal as a reuse, link it back to the data set that you've used. So we want to really push that to create a kind of ecosystem of um, data providers, data reusers that create new apps and services and then end users that make use of those new applications and new services. So that's our objective really and goal is to kind of push this, this ecosystem of open data here in Luxembourg. And one of the other things we are doing is we, when after the hackathon is finished and we've given out the prizes, we will uh, look at interesting ideas and teams and invite them back to pitch to us and Digital Luxembourg to further develop their ideas. And we will have some budget to actually pay for those, that development into the finished product. So last year, as, as I already said, uh, transport was the subject of the hackathon. And we had great, lots of great contributions. And out of those, all of these great contributions, they weren't necessarily the, the, the prize winners. Uh, we picked two teams that we've, were, which we found the ideas very interesting. First, uh, Eon, uh, Thierry, who um, did the project on developing this API, reusing all this data and putting it in a uh, consistent format. 
and really having a very usable API for developers to build service on top of again. So we really liked that idea and wanted to push that and, 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 and actually promote that. And we had then another team from Intag, a company in Luxembourg, that then on top of this API, the, the Transport for Luxembourg API, developed a, an app and that's also pub been published uh, on, on, on the App Store already where you can get notification if your bus is too late or if the weather is bad and you, sh and, and you want to take, or the weather is really nice and you want to take uh, Velo stations. It gives you real-time information about where, which Velo stations there are bikes available. Okay. So we pro promoted those two projects last year and we want to do a similar thing this year, obviously with, with new ideas and, and different, project, uh, different kind of people. You see so many people here. Did you expect so many? Did you expect more or less? Well, we're very happy because last year already for the first edition we had 120 people coming to the hackathon, which was more than any one of us imagined. And I think this year there's about 150 people participating. So again, it's even better that so many people are interested. I must say that it's not only Luxembourg, it's, well, it's really a greater region where people and companies participate in this hackathon. So you not only see Luxembourg companies or Luxembourg people participating here, but also from Germany, France, Belgium, or even further afield. Okay. So it's working how you expect it? Yeah, we're really happy with uh, the attendance and we'll be even happier tomorrow we can judge all the, the, the great, uh, great projects and ideas that people present. When uh, people want to find uh, Data Luxembourg, uh, where is the web address? Okay, so very important is that the open data portal, the address is data.public.lu. So, so, and you can use what they find? Yeah, the idea is, and I just want to stress again, anyone can create an account on data.public.lu and upload even their own data. So even you as a private person or as a... Um, um, uh, as the association, you, if you have any data that's interesting, you can upload that data as an open data set onto the portal. The only data we would have that would be interesting would be, uh, for example, uh, all the events that we have. Yes. We're covering around Luxembourg anything geek event and mm -hmm. we know which conventions are because most people send us also yeah. them. We could publish, for example, uh, go there and publish uh, the data on the events exactly. that are coming. Yes, and then anyone can reuse that data. Okay. When we are looking at the hackathon, uh, the things that people need to code, what are the challenges they can accept? Expect? So one of the, ch I think one of the main challenges that any team here at the Open Data Hackathon has when they try uh, to um, do that idea is just the time frame of just 24 hours with no sleep, ideally, in a team of four people to not only come up with an idea and a concept for a an app or an API or a reuse or something, but actually develop it enough and code enough to be able to have something functioning. Because we're not looking for just an idea or concept, because that's quite easy to think of uh, an app, an idea for an app and uh, of a concept. What's really hard is actually putting it in practice then and with the data that's there and the data is not perfect, there's always problems that you don't have exactly the right data that you need to do the, to do the concept that you think mm -hmm. in your head come up with something that's working that's actually and what we want to see is actually working prototype something we can click on that reacts and that actually sh um, shows the value and and, the, and, and, and and the concept that, that you thought of so to actually code that to up to a state that's usable enough so that we as a jury can can look at it can use it without it crashing immediately and that we actually see the value that they are giving with that, that, that project how long up front would do they know uh, about what subject the challenge is? Well, we published the, sub the subject of the challenge on the Game of Code website a few weeks ago. Yes. Okay. So I think some of the cleverer teams, they've already done some preparation so and, and worked on the, on the idea before the start of the hackathon. The teams can bring up their own material here with, their yeah. laptops. They don't get anything here. No. Basically, so as you can see, everyone brings their own laptop or even a desktop PC with desktop monitor. Um, they set up their own kind of little working space and then start hacking. So that means they need a concept, they need to then develop the code and you have also the presentation after. Exactly. So, then so they need also to have a presentation ready or in the 24 hour times. Yeah. So basically they, 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 they come up with an idea, they use the data um, hopefully that we have on the Open Data website, develop their idea into a concept and a working prototype where they use the data and they can 
which isn't developed enough to that can show the value. Then they have to f uh, develop a five-minute presentation about their idea and their concept and their working prototype, which they have to present to the jury. We have a jury of six people. In parallel, the jury also beforehand, we already, because they have to publish their prototype as well as their, their source code on, on GitHub and working prototype on the server somewhere so that the jury can actually, we can go look at it and, and explore it and as well as the code. So there's three things really. There's the code, there's the working prototype and there's the presentation that they have to develop in those 24 hours. Uh, quite a lot to uh, develop exactly. in that uh, time. So I say I thank you okay. for the interview and for your time. Thank you. Uh, until, uh, I hope, uh, until next time and I hope you have a good hackathon. Thank you very much. Huh? Yeah.